Melbourne restrictions return. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to talk about the breaking news that restrictions have returned once again to Melbourne. Now before we go through this latest media release, I want to put things in perspective. Now, whenever we talk about the pandemic, we need to look at it in perspective, particularly here in Australia, because a lot of people can get scared and the media can amp up the fear about this. It's just how it is. Fear sells. Fear gets clicks. Fear gets eyeballs. So let's just have a look at some of the data from the John Hopkins, sorry, the Johns Hopkins map that's tracking all of the just the figures from the pandemic now if we have a look here in victoria in australia now there have been over twenty thousand cases twenty thousand five hundred and fifty three and of that there have been 820 deaths now no one likes it when people die particularly of an illness but we need to look at this in perspective the vast majority of people are recovering okay the vast majority are recovering you can have the incident rate here is 310 per 100,000 people. And the case fatality ratio is at 3.99%. Now you've got to understand that what's funny here, they used to actually report on those that have recovered here on the Johns Hopkins map, but that seems to have disappeared. So when you're seeing the news, when you're getting afraid, when you're getting worried, put this in perspective. Tell people that, you know, that are freaking out. Put it in perspective. This is what's going to happen. Uh, people are going to get scared. People are going to jump on this bandwagon. And that's why you have people acting irrationally. That's why you have people becoming Karens, reporting in their neighbors, dobbing them into the authorities, going nuts because someone's wearing a mask. It's ironic. Someone morbidly obese who's probably a 40, well, no, who it's been proven, has about a 40 times hospitalization risk from a normal person it wouldn't, you know, if you're freaking out about someone, you know, not wearing a face protection or not obeying the rules. So we need to look at this all in perspective. Now let's have a look at these additional measures, everyone. Additional COVID safe measures to keep Victorians safe. Now, I, I really hope this isn't going to have more of an impact on the economy down there. It's really going to hurt business. So as public health officials work to pinpoint the source of the, these latest cases, additional COVID safe measures will be put in place across Greater Melbourne to help, help keep Victorians safe. And I, I saw whether the media was reporting on like the, the places that people went. Uh, and you know, Rachel's following a whole lot of carnival groups on Facebook. And it looks like this person went to a whole lot of like smoking places and barbecue places. <laughs> and everyone's going, is this you? Is this you in the groups? On the advice of public health experts from 6 p.m. tonight, private gatherings in the home will be limited to five visitors per day. I mean, so that my family, we couldn't even visit anyone because there's so many of us. Public gatherings will be limited to 30 people and face masks will need to be worn indoors unless an exemption applies. So is this face mask all the time or face mask when you're having a private gathering? So if you've got people over to your private house, do you have to wear face masks? I mean, come on. The face mask requirement applies to everyone aged 12 years and older. These additional measures are an important extra precaution while we await the results of testing and undertake widespread contact tracing to stamp out the virus. Schools and workplaces will remain open with their current restrictions that are in place depending on the workplace. That this includes COVID safe measures and in some cases a density requirement. There are no changes to existing density rules. Victorians who live in Greater Melbourne and need to travel to regional Victoria can still do so. However, the, restrict, uh, the restrictions travel with them. For example, if you visit someone outside of metropolitan Melbourne, they must not have more than five visitors in their home that day. If you attend a public gathering outside of Greater Melbourne, it must not be bigger than 30 people. So if a Melbourneian comes to your event, you're instantly capped at 30 people, everyone. Sucks to be a Melbourneian. Victorians visiting regional Victoria from Melbourne will also need to wear a face mask when indoors, even when outside of metropolitan Melbourne, unless an exemption applies. So 
That's how you'll identify your Melburnians, guys. I mean, just the fact that you'd have to wear these bloody things going out and about, that, that will... A lot of people just won't go out. You know, when I'm forced to wear them, which rarely happens in Queensland, I, I either I forget or I can't be bothered going out. I did wear my, uh, you know, paint stripping mask, my proper, you know, mask that will actually protect me because, uh, you know, the, and then people walk away from you. Then, you you, you know, the Bane effect. If we're going to play post-apocalyptic uh, role play, let's do it properly. Keeping our more vulnerable community members safe is always a priority, which is why hospital and aged care visitor restrictions will also now apply statewide. Shouldn't that just be the issue? What about everyone who's morbidly obese? How are we going to measure that? What, what, what's the, there's never any discussion about comorbidities, guys. Uh, is it is it because we just you know everyone have, no one can handle being fat shamed uh, here's the thing it, it's it's because your body is really good at storing food for the winter that's it it's an evolutionary response it's it's an advantage the only problem is we all we've got so much sugar everywhere that uh you know it's unnatural really the amount of food and the type of food that we're eating now is completely unnatural so you you know it really shouldn't be a shame but the government's just pumping out all this bad advice and you know it feels like it's a band-aid solution all the time. Anyway, back to this. Use of the Service Victoria QR code service will still be mandatory in all venues and facilities required to have mandatory electronic record keeping from Friday the 28th of May. However, due to the current circumstances, we will pause on the move to remove the density quotient in outdoor spaces and venues to a maximum of 200 in smaller spaces than 400 square meters. Timing for this easing will be reassessed when public health advisors indicate it is appropriate to do so. The public health advisory panel will provide advice as soon as possible to upcoming tier one and tier two events if any modifications will be required for the event to proceed. We urge all Victorians to maintain COVID safe behaviors to keep our community safe. And most importantly, if you're unwell, get tested as soon as possible and stay isolated until you receive a negative result. All eligible Victorians are also urged to get vaccinated as soon as possible. Appointments are available at sites across the state and at participating GP clinics. Walk-ins are also accepted at many sites. Check your eligibility and your nearest site now. For more information, you can go there. And let's, let's have a look at the quotes from the acting premier. These additional measures are about keeping Victorians safe while our coronavirus detectives work to track down any additional cases and stamp out the spread of this deadly virus. If... You, deadly. Okay. Look at them. If they were serious about this, where's the, where is the campaign as well addressing comorbidities? Where is that? That should that where we should be hammering that home every bloody day. If you want to reduce your risk of hospitalization, lose weight, you fat bastard. That should be what it is. Right there. Why isn't that in the media? Is is it because people are ashamed? Well, you know, that's life, guys. That's life. And talking from someone, I'm not. I've got to lose weight too, guys. That's how it is. It's life. It's harder when you get older. Trust me, all you young young whippersnappers, wait till you you're over forty and people start calling, thinking you're a grandparent to your own children. Quotes attributed to the Minister for Health, Martin Foley. We're asking anyone who's been to any of the listed exposure sites to please get tested and isolate as required, and that all Victorians stick to these additional measures so we can continue to stay safe and stay open. So there we have it, everyone, and. Well, there you go. Restrictions have returned in Melbourne. And the risk of Victoria is that they will just impose even harsher and harsher lockdowns. So what are the solutions to this? And I would argue, don't let fear manipulate you. Don't fall for the fear. Be rational. Manage your risks. Look at what strategies you can take to minimize your own risk of succumbing to this. There's things you can all do right now. Seriously. If, if your, your diet is terrible, clean it up simple reduce your your uh, insulin and glucose spikes that 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 sh that should be the message that's driven home i don't know why it's not i suspect it's because of fear and shaming but there you have it as always guys thanks for watching like share and subscribe to the channel let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one 
And I feel sorry for all the Melbournians who are watching. Sorry, guys. As always, thanks for watching. If you want to support us, you can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Worth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.